We have two pieces of fossil coral that was recovered from drill cores off of Barbados. So by dating these samples and knowing the depth at which they were retrieved, we can use that information to create a point-by-point -point reconstruction of sea level for the last 20,000 years. There's one particular sea level rise of interest. We call it Meltwater Pulse 1A. During that period of time, we believe sea level rose about 20 meters in 500 years, or about four to five meters per 100 years. If the same happens again, it would translate to as much as 16 feet of additional sea level rise in the next century. Factor in today's affairs, and the rise may be even faster. If we don't get emissions under control, the rate of sea level rise will keep accelerating. And so in the next century, it's not only that we get the additional five to seven feet that we got the last century, that's gonna happen, but we add on to that. So now we're looking by 2200, probably at least 15 feet above and probably 20. By 2100, the cities will know that they are doomed, the coastal cities anyway. If the oceans rose with accelerating speed, the planet's most exposed cities may not have time to build adequate sea defenses. Sea levels would rise by 16 feet per century. New Orleans could flood, followed by Miami. Miami's the worst off, and New Orleans, those are two cities that will have to be abandoned, I imagine. As southern Florida is lost to the sea, other coastal regions will also struggle to hold back the tides. Among them is the San Francisco Bay Area, with its seven and a half million people. The San Francisco Bay Area is particularly vulnerable to sea level rise because of our history. Although the bay is big, it's very shallow. Two thirds of it was less than 12 feet deep. So lots of it was filled and reclaimed. We're standing here on reclaimed land and all of downtown San Francisco, the financial district, is on reclaimed land. We've already seen seven inches of sea level rise in the bay over the past century. We know this because the longest continuously operating tide gauge in America is at the Golden Gate. So we have 154 years of data. We're just now beginning to realize with accelerated sea level rise, we're going to have to prepare and have a new plan for how we deal with it in the Bay Area. If sea levels rose by an additional 16 feet per century, hundreds of thousands of people would lose their homes in the Bay Area. To protect San Francisco Bay, levees would have to be built on a massive scale. The silver lining is the engineering will create so many jobs. Holding off the sea would be the major employer of the world by 2100, I think. This is going to be worldwide. We're going to have a damn revolution. <laughs> The bay's entire coastline would have to be defended with levees in order to protect it. But in the east, the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta would remain vulnerable because it's at or below sea level. The delta has some of America's most fertile farmland. The most important part is food. It's unbelievable the proportion of human food that comes from land that is at sea level, not necessarily right next to the sea, but at an elevation that will be impacted by sea level rising. 
sea level rises a little, all those fields next to it, even if they're not covered by the sea, are rendered useless for human crops by the sea. If the delta and its farmland were lost to the sea, California's food supply would be in jeopardy. The delta is also one of the main sources of fresh water on the American West Coast. This is the, the hub of California's water supply. 26 million people drink water that comes from this estuary. That's a huge number. Two thirds of the population of, of California gets water from this estuary. If you raise sea level even a foot, you know, which in our mind isn't all that, as geologists, that doesn't that's seem coming. like much. Yeah, it's but that's too. common, yeah. Um, if you raise sea level a foot, the work that we've done suggests that you will salt up this end of the delta, even if the levees all stay together, even if they don't fail. If sea levels rise by six feet this century, local rivers will be contaminated with salt and California's main fresh water supply will be lost. In the next century, after an additional 16 feet, the entire delta will be claimed by the sea. But there may be a way to defend both the delta and San Francisco Bay. San Francisco is among the, the best, easiest to save. The most radical solution would be putting a big dam right across the bay under the Golden Gate Bridge. On the ocean side, the sea is about 130 feet deep. Building a dam would be controversial and would turn the bay into a freshwater lagoon. But at a time of intense sea level rise, some may consider this the best option. Using cutting edge technology, huge dredgers could pick up sand from the seabed nearby and deposit it as the dam's foundation. The dam's shallow incline would ensure maximum stability against earthquakes, breaking the power of the ocean waves with ease. Vast pipes and pumps would be installed to keep the bay's river water flowing out to sea. The Golden Gate Dam would cost two and a half billion dollars and could be heightened to deal with any sea level rise in the future. San Francisco and the Bay Area would be saved. One region that may benefit from the U.S.'s sea defenses is the Mediterranean. It's flanked by countries both rich and poor that have thousands of years of history. The Mediterranean has a unique feature, a narrowing at its mouth. The Straits of Gibraltar are between 10 and 20 miles wide, stretching from southern Spain to Africa. A dam could keep the rising water of the Atlantic separate from the Mediterranean. There's been a plan since World War II, for instance, to put a dam between the rock of Gibraltar and Morocco on the African side. A dam big enough that sea level rise does not affect the Mediterranean. But building a dam here has one major drawback. Every year, the Mediterranean loses two feet of sea level through evaporation that is compensated by the inflow of water from the Atlantic. The dam would cut this off. In the case that you build a dam in the Gibraltar Straits, there will not be the flow of water from the Atlantic. So in the case that you cut the flow, so there will be a evaporation, there will not be compensation, and there will be a permanent drop of the water level. After years of evaporation, the Mediterranean would turn into a stagnant saltwater lake. Eventually, the sea would dry out. And if then the sea level would rise,
Sea defense engineer Peter Janssen maps out possible solutions on how to keep the Atlantic flowing while building the world's largest super dam. I looked at the surroundings. I looked at what may be required to make a closure. And then, well, I thought it, it may be feasible. One of Janssen's solutions is to use the same building techniques applied to the Golden Gates. The dam would be 20 miles long and tower 1,250 feet above the seabed, the same height as the Empire State Building. Another solution is to keep the natural flow of the Gibraltar Straits. Huge amounts of Atlantic surface water will flow into the Mediterranean. At a much lower depth, some of the Med's saltier water will be pumped back out again, keeping the sea's salt and sea level stable. The world's greatest super dam would cost $275 billion. The total cost related to what may be the impact for all the cities around the Mediterranean, uh, it seemed acceptable. It may be a solution. The Gibraltar Dam would be the world's largest man-made structure, using enough rock to build a thousand great pyramids. Although the dam would cut off the migration of marine life between the Med and the Atlantic, it would save the entire Mediterranean coastline from flooding. It's certainly technologically possible. The old cradle of civilization becomes really the center of civilization. They would be the last coastal cities never affected by sea level rising. 